Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Minnesota. It's weather more fit for snowballs than baseballs, but we play ball tonight in Minneapolis. The Twins return home to a winter wonderland, hoping to turn things around quicker than a New York minute. Game one between the Twins and Mets is next on Fox Sports North. April is supposed to signal the start of spring in Minnesota, but so far this month has been an extension of winter. Six inches of snow yesterday proved to be no problem for an army of workers who cleared the stands. Baseball will be played tonight at Target Field, where the Twins meet the Mets. Both players and fans will be bundled up tonight, battling wind-chilled temperatures in the 20. Vance Worley against the Mets. John Neese starting tonight. We welcome you to Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North. 24 hours ago, <laughs> a blizzard, six inches of snow, and that six inches is gone. Still snowing here tonight at Target Field, but the field will be ready, the fans are ready, and the stands as well is an army of good folks sprayed, raked, and swept the snow out of this stadium. Meanwhile, the field itself de-iced and drained under the supervision of head groundskeeper Larry DeVito. The field's ready to go for tonight. We're just cleaning up the warning track now, getting rid of some last bits of snow. Uh, we got a game ready on Tuesday in anticipation of this, this uh, event on Friday. So uh, other than putting foul lines down, we're pretty much ready to go. So the question is, Ron Coomer, how do you hit in the cold? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, there's some things to help the hitters that we didn't have years ago. First of all, the batting gloves. This looks like just a regular batting glove. The hand, you know, you put your pine tar on and it stays nice and sticky on the bat. But the back side of it, as I'm wearing it, is neoprene. It is outstanding and it keeps your hands very warm, Tommy. So when I grip this bat, it works as a regular batting glove, but the warmth Absolutely incredible. So the guys, when they do go to home plate, you'll see a whole boatload of them wearing these gloves. But when they go to home plate, your hands are nice and warm. Fingertips are warm. Unlike this hand, this one's nice. They'll be okay swinging the bats tonight. Players will need all the help they can get. Coming up, we'll head up to the booth. Dick and Bird for more on twin starter Vance Worley. The Twins and Mets tonight right here at Chili Target Field.
Presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. If you had a ticket for tonight's game, bring warm clothes. It's a cold April night here at Target Field in the opening game of baseball's interleague series between the New York Mets and the Minnesota Twins. Vance Worley was the opening day starter for the Twins on April 1st, and he had similar weather conditions to work with, minus the snowflakes. And we welcome you to Target Field. Dick and Burt with you, folks. We're not kidding. I got this snowball. I made it on the Target Field uh, infield uh, mid-afternoon today. And Vance Worley, who made his Twins debut under similar weather conditions, gets the baseball again tonight. I want you to hold that throughout the ball game. It's okay? cold. <laughs> But Vance Worley in his opening debut here in Minnesota. The thing he went six innings. He ended up getting a loss in that ball game to Ver Justin Verlander, but he had 13 ground ball outs in his last start. That coming in Baltimore, he had only four ground ball outs in his five innings. Key for Worley tonight in this cold weather. Get that ball and throw it to Joe Mauer, the catcher. Work as quick as you can. Keep, get your defense back on the bench. 30 years of doing this. I don't think I've ever said this before. The snow has stopped. We're ready for baseball. leaving a warm, relatively warm dugout and heading out to the thawed well you can't say it's thawed because the field was never frozen uh, but the uh, snow that was covered by yes. uh, snow not that long ago here's Terry Collins and the Mets he's not a big fan of interleague play he's not a big fan of uh, cold temperatures he's got both here <laughs> David Wright Headlining the Yankee, excuse me, the Mets batting order. Brought to you by Menard. Giorgiani Valdespin leading off. Daniel Murphy, David Wright, Ike Davis, John Buck, Lucas Duda, Marlon Bird, Mike Baxter, and Ruben Tejada. Well, Vance Worley on the uh, on the hill here tonight for the Twins. He has faced the Mets before, of course, coming over from the Philadelphia Phillies, making his third start. Got to work quick here tonight, folks. Work quick, Vance Worley. And the defense that will appreciate a quick worker tonight. Brought to you by Northland Ford. Josh Willingham, Aaron Hicks, 
Wilkin Ramirez in right field with the Twins facing a left-handed starter for the first time. Blue Floramon Dozier, Morno Mauer around Worley, and we're ready to go. Valdespin will lead things off. Mets making just their second visit to Minnesota. The first one was years ago in the Metrodome in the middle of summer. Yeah, Twins ended up sweeping the Mets back in 2004 in that three-game series. And a first pitch strike. I mentioned before, Worley has faced the Mets before. This is his eighth career start against the New York Mets. He's 3-3 three and three with an ERA just over five against the Mets. Crack foul, two strikes. Now the weather everywhere has been brutal this spring. The Mets coming here from Philadelphia. Twins coming here from Kansas City. First two days in Kansas City were fine. Wednesday night wasn't so pleasant. But this is a pretty harsh baseball condition. We'll see how the two teams perform inside one and two. Well, for the Mets, they not only have this three-game series, then they go to Denver where it's even been colder. So, uh, you know, they, they have a tough road trip. One and two from Warley to Valdespin. Missing inside, and it's two and two. Valdespin, 25 years old in his second season with the Mets, played in 94 ball games last year. Mets don't have a lot of speed, and that's why Valdespin is at, in that leadoff position. He can steal some bases. Popped up foul over the Mets dugout. Morley in his two starts, a combined 11 innings. He's given up 18 hits, only two walks with five strikeouts. And no decision in his last start in Baltimore, where the Twins ended up winning that ball game, six to five in the ninth inning. A little looper to left, and that's going to die in front of Willingham. So a leadoff single for Valdez Bean. Even the umpires are bundled up. The snow is picking up again here a little bit. We got Mike Everett behind the plate, Marty Foster at first, Scott Barry, and Tim Welke. My introduction to Vance Worley came at Twins Fest. He and his fiance came to Minnesota, and I saw Worley. He was bundled up. He had a thick, heavy coat on, a stocking cap on. Looked like he was shivering as he was talking to me. And this was inside the Metrodome. Well, I remember the first two games. I mean, opening day here, and then also in Baltimore, pitch without sleeves. That's a fair ball into the corner. Valdespin rounding second on his way to third. He'll be held. The throw coming in towards second base. And Daniel Murphy is now 11 for 16 against Vance Worley, and he wasted no time in that at bat, cracking a double on the first pitch. Well, one thing the hitters know here, the pitchers want to get ahead. They want to work quick. They're going to throw a lot of fastballs. That's what that was right there, outer half of the plate. And Murphy just hitting it down that left field line, putting runners at second and third. For Daniel Murphy, that's his fourth double of the year. And good numbers against Worley, like you mentioned, Dick. David Wright, the batter. Inside ball one. David Wright, kind of the uh, veteran here, in his tenth major league season with the Mets, six-time National League All-Star, two-time Rolling Gold Glove winner, career 300 hitter. Up and in two and zero. Oh. As much as we might claim to be acclimated to weather like this in this part of the world, native Minnesotans are like anybody else. When you get cold, your fingertips generally are the first thing that uh, start tingling, or or you feel the cold first in your fingertips. Like, a... like mine are right now. <laughs> <laughs> but then you combine that with the fact that Worley, I mean, he makes his living with his fingertips, propelling a baseball with his fingertips. So I don't know how in the world anybody. We talked about the difficulty in hitting in weather like this, but how you can pitch in weather. Well, like believe this. it or not, when you're out there and your adrenaline's flowing, it, it, you get the blow on your hands. You don't feel it as bad as say if you're, you're sitting like we are right now. 
you know, your fingertips do get a little bit on the numb side. But out there, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you get numb a little bit, but because you're aggressive and you're moving your fingers all the time, you don't get as cold. Three and one now to David Wright, Ike Davis on deck. To left center field and hit pretty well. That'll drop for a hit and a couple runs will score. So Orley gives up three hits and a couple of runs early in the first inning. Well, he fell behind an account. Looked like he took something off that pitch, but right so strong, able to stay back, keep those hands back, and hit that ball to deep left center. For David Wright, his third double. Like I was a breaking ball right there, but he went down, reached out. You can see the strength that Rice has. Wright has good contact, ball landing in deep left center. And the Mets take an early 2 0 lead. A lot of doubles for a really good baseball player. Ike Davis, the batter. And Worley giving up some early runs again. That was the theme of his opening day start here but also through spring training when teams would bunch up a lot of hits early against him 1 and 0 to Davis and that drifts outside and he falls behind Davis too let's take another look at David Wright they always say keep your hands back even though your body is committed but he kept those hands back to allow to that those wrists and his forearms to get some good wood on that ball and he hit that ball a long way. Maybe a little off balance but very strong. Three and oh. You know, Vance Worley kind of one of those pitchers, Dick, coming into this year, he pitched a total of, you know, 277 innings at the major league level. He'd give up more hits to innings pitched. Needs to get that first out here, though. There's a strike, three and one. Rick Anderson looking on. Worley now in 11 innings has given up 21 hits on the season. And he misses low. So the first four batters reach. Hottest hitter that the Mets have, and one of the hottest hitters in the National League, John Buck. Yeah, John Buck coming over from the Florida Marlins. Off to a great start with his new ball club, the Mets. Five home runs already. He's driven in 15 runs. I guess he'd be the National League version of Chris Davis with right. the uh, Baltimore Orioles. John Buck with five home runs in the first nine games. And home runs in his last three games. Youngsters bundled up here, hoping that uh, Worley can work his way through this first inning. Hot soup at the ballpark. Swing and a miss. So Warley gets ahead of John Buck. Yeah, John Buck in his 10th Major League season. He's a career 235 hitter, so he's off to one of his best starts as a major leaguer. Last year with the Florida Marlins, he hit only 192 in 106 games. So everything going right for John Buck right now. Just off the inside corner, close pitch, one and one. To be the 20th pitch of Worley's first inning, and he still does not have an out. Foul away, and it's one and two. John Buck thrilled with his start, probably also thrilled that he's out of Toronto where he might have been asked to catch R.A. Dickey, who's off to a slow start. Yeah, he was actually traded from the Marlins to Toronto and then traded to the Mets 
in the middle of December about a month later. So he was a Toronto Blue Jay for about a month. It would have been a second step with the Blue Jays. One and two. And missing inside two and two. Morley off to a start uh, kind of like Mike Pelfrey did uh, in that second game in Kansas City having a tough first inning. Need something good to happen. That's that might good. Be good. Oh. Except it goes right through Kluth and another run's going to score. Could have been two should have been at least one and it's none. And going to second is John Buck. Yeah, Trevor Poof, we have seen him make some great plays, especially in Kansas City, coming in, fielding the ball. This ball just kind of ate him up. It, it, he expecting this ball to maybe stay down and went right through the wickets in the left field. First air of the year for Poof, and it's a big one. Lucas Duda now with the Mets already in front, three to nothing, still nobody out. Strike one call. Due to 27 years old, played his college ball out of USC. Same place Roy Smalley did. And congratulations to Roy Smalley on being inducted into the College Hall of Fame. Over on the hands, one and one. Due to the designated hitter for the Mets, ordinarily a left fielder. Got some pop in his bat last year with the Mets hit 15 home runs in 121 games. Foul back and it's one and two. Already 25 pitches for Warley. Terry Collins. Hoping his team can continue on and have a good road trip. They had things going for a while, won a few ball games in a row, then played poorly and lost the last two in Philadelphia. That's a half swing, and that's strike three. So Duda gone on strikes. Well, Tim Welke, the crew chief, drawing him up right there as home plate umpire Mike Everett needed some help. And Duda, the first out. And now Marlon Bird. Middle infield playing back already trailing three to nothing. Twins want to get another out here in a ground ball if they can. And that's dumped behind first. It'll score one. And it'll score two. It's five to nothing already. Bird with a little flare over the head of the drawn in Morno. And it's a five nothing Mets lead. Yeah, Bird driving in his fifth and sixth RBIs a year in his first season with the Mets coming over as a free agent last year with the Boston Red Sox fastball inside out swing and a little flare down that right field line at the time Dozier and then Ramirez got it back in two more runs on the board for the Mets Here's Mike Baxter. Outside ball one. Worley thought he might have hit the corner. Now, did you find for most of your career? I think we saw it uh, the other night. Brian Onora in Kansas City kept the strike zone under adverse weather conditions. A uh, pretty good uh, yeah. uh, strike zone strike. of integrity, regardless right. of the weather. Right, exactly. Umpire's going to call the game. He doesn't care if it's raining or it's snowing or what the conditions are. The goal is a home plate umpire, any umpire, to be consistent. And Mike Everett, one of those very consistent umpires. I think that's Marty Foster. The first base umpire. Trying to stay warm. <laughs> Down and away, two and one. And we talked in the pregame show about the merits of a starting pitcher 
in this case Worley having maybe a seven or eight pitch inning but now here you look and it's 30 pitches there's still only a one out on the board. Yeah, and what you have is your you know your defensive players just standing there and are, you know even though you know Trevor Plouffe missed that ball you know there were five hitters up before he had that chance to you know get that ground ball so that's not an excuse he should have caught that ball and he knows he should have but that happens. Two and two. Wilkin Ramirez. Glad to be starting for the first time for the Twins tonight but looking around at snowflakes and fans all bundled up. Two and two. Line foul. shot weather wise two and two and that's down the line back into the seats Marlon Bird with a two run single but he paid a price well, Ron Coomer said the type of gloves that they wear but you can see the sting almost off that bat so his hands <laughs> you can see he's still kind of holding them like well I felt that but you know what he picked up a couple RBIs with that base hit to right. Two and two. You know, Baxter asks for time. Yeah, you're right. This has turned out to be very similar to the inning that uh, Mike Pelfrey had in Kansas City the other day. Hard to tell. Had the beer fallen her uh, or baseball fall in the beer glass, and rather than try to extract the ball or pour out the beer, she's enjoying the be the beer around the baseball. <laughs> two and two. Popped up, and Plouffe has a chance. Two down. The number nine batter, Ruben Tejada. Tejada, obviously, the ninth man to bat here. The first five batters who came to the plate all scored, one of them reaching on an error. Tejada, only 23 years old from Panama, in his fourth season with the Mets already. Last year hit 289 in 114 ball games. Up and in. Ball one. Fifth time that the Mets and Twins have played in I guess this would still be called interleague. It seems like uh, you know there's so there's an interleague game every yep. series yep. now, but uh, the Twins actually have the advantage seven to five over their four years of meeting. Three of the four have been played in New York. Two and oh to Tejada. And now three and oh. Valdespin who started the game with a single is in the on deck circle. 38 pitches, 21 strikes for Worley, trying to get this final out here in the first. Vance Worley making his 49th career start, his 56th career appearance. There's a strike. 18 wins, 14 losses. Birthday boy getting loose, starting two down in the bullpen, Pedro Hernandez. 24 today. Three and one to center. And Hicks ends the inning. 40 pitches for Vance Worley. 
five runs for the Mets. Find themselves behind early five nothing. Ron Gardner trying to encourage his Menard batting order to get the one or more back here in the bottom of the first. Aaron Hicks leading off. Joe Maurer, Josh Willingham, Justin Morneau, Ryan Doman, Trevor Bluff, Wilkin Ramirez, Brian Dozier, and Pedro Florimo. And Jonathan Nice on the mound for the New York Mets, making his third start. This guy has been very consistent. Making his second career start against the Twins. Twins saw him back in 2010 when the Mets beat the Twins six to nothing. And the first pitch to Aaron Hicks at the knees. It's the first left-handed starting pitcher that the Twins have faced this year. And Hicks, who obviously has struggled, gets a chance to hit from his dominant side, the right side of the plate. And a slow breaking ball hits the corner and it's 0 and 2. Yeah, Nice has a curveball, fastball, two seamer, four seamer, meaning he'll cut that ball a little bit or run away to, from right handers. Very good change up and a little cut fastball he's added in his sixth season with the Mets. 1 and 2. Bauer will hit next, then Josh Willingham. Two and two. They won't be hard to get lost. We'll find them, won't we? Fresh from the deer stand. Three and two to Hicks. Well, what Nice has been able to accomplish 10 consecutive quality starts dating back to August 12th of last year. And over those 10 starts, he's averaged over almost almost seven wow. innings a start. That's the type of uh, night that it's going to be. Nice has very good control. He got ahead of Hicks 0-2, and then he threw four straight out of the strike zone. So Hicks drawing a walk, and that'll bring up Bauer. Northland Ford defense for the New York Mets. Baxter in left, Valdez in center, Bird in right, David Wright, Tejada, Murphy, Davis, and John Buck behind the plate. So Hicks aboard with a walk. Here's Maurer. Ball one. First home run and a cluster of hits in Kansas City. Called strike, one and one. Joe doesn't like that call. 
kind of kind of talking to Mike Everett right there. Boy, hit that ball a little bit inside. That's probably what Joe's asking. But that ball was inside a little bit. It looked like it was received particularly well by Buck. And oh, have the opportunity to. When you set away and the ball's in, it's hard to you know catch it properly. Not hard to frame it. Right. One and two to Mauer. He's making his 97th career start. 36 wins, 32 losses. Only 26 years old in his sixth season. Blocked by Buck. Two and two. Last 10 starts, we told you his consecutive quality starts. You go back to those 10 starts, six and three with a 2.31 ERA for, for Nice, dating back to August. Two and two. Tribute to a response by the Twins lineup after seeing the Mets score five times in the top of the inning. That's to left. And a fair ball. Hicks round second on his way to third. The throw coming to second, and Maurer is in with a double. Well, hopefully, the Twins can do exactly what the Mets did in their top of the first inning. Instead, it was a walk and a double. Murphy doubled the second hitter for the Mets. So Maurer with a double. It's his third double of the year. Puts runners in second and third. A typical Maurer hit. Fastball right there. Just taking that pitch down toward left field. Right into that corner. And Hicks scoots over to third. That's a pretty good job by Baxter in the corner. It was a out of our view, but he must have handled that pretty well to keep Hicks from scoring. Playing his first game here at Target Field, Willingham takes low ball one. Bouncer to short. Hicks is going to come home. And it's a five to one ball game. Maurer had to stay put at second. One away. Now Willingham picking up his fourth RBI of the year. Hicks scoring on the ground ball. He didn't score because Baxter did indeed make a nice little play in the corner. Now watch him. He has to go over here and kind of backhand that play. Get that ball back in as quick as he can. And that's what Joe Bobber is watching right there. How quick. Does he get to that ball and does he get to it before maybe it rattles in that corner? The Twins able to get one of the five runs the Mets were supposed to, or they put on the board. Back. Ball one to Morno. Low breaking ball and it's lifted to left. Baxter coming in and he makes the catch for out number two. Timberwolves basketball is on Fox Sports North Plus tonight. They're in Utah taking on the Jazz. And tip off is in about a half an hour at 8 10. Here are the channels you can find Fox Sports North Plus. And if you don't see your carrier here, go to foxsportsnorth.com for complete listing. Twins would like to get Maurer in from second base. Willingham and Morno have been retired. One run is in, and now Doman is hit by a pitch. So a slow breaking ball that got Doman around one of his feet, and that'll get Ploof up with two men on. Yeah, the breaking ball down and in. I was just going to say I thought John Buck did a good job of blocking this ball, keeping it in front of him, but it must have uh, tipped the uh, shoe of. Ryan Doman, let's take a look right here. Buck getting that ball. Nice time to shave your beard. <laughs> Ryan Doman, more clean shaven on a cold night when the beard might have helped keep his chin warm. Here's Plouffe. 
Ball one. Twins had a terrible time in Kansas City hitting with men in scoring position. And here this first inning of the homestand starts with two men in scoring position and they still do not have a hit. Love to get one here from Bluth. At the knees, a strike, and it's two and one. Foul back, got a pitch up, sent it to the screen. Boy, we've seen a lot of that over the first uh, eight, nine ball games, Dick. It seems like the hitters are getting that pitch, but just fouling it straight back. Ace last year made 30 starts for the Mets. He won 13 ball games. He gave up 22 home runs over those 30 starts. Sharply hit on the ground and under the glove of Tejada. Bauer will score. Dome it to third, and there's a big two out hit, and it's a 5 2 ball game. This might be a, a, a shortstop that's from Panama that might be a little bit on the cold side out there, and sometimes it cuts down your range when you have so much more to wear. Breaking ball, Bluth waits back nicely, hits it to the left of the shortstop, Tejada. He kind of wrestled with it right here, just got underneath his glove. Well, a couple on the board, now runners on the corners with two out for Ramirez. It'll be an RBI single for Trevor Plouffe. Inside ball one. Two and oh. Ramirez making his first start in right field with the left hander going. Chris Parmley starts the game on the bench. Three and oh. Yeah, he's came into this outing over his career, averaging less than three walks per nine innings. He's Walk his second batter here this inning. And a little over seven strikeouts per nine innings. 3 0 to Ramirez. Wow. Green lighted and he nearly took the helmet off of Dolman. Ramirez creamed that ball. Ron Gardner hired gave Parmalee the green light in Baltimore and yeah. clicked on a two run home run. And Kind of got Parmalee going for a few games. Now three and one. Chopper to third. Right. Fires across. Davis is able to stretch. And that ends a long first inning. Seven runs on the board in the first.
Wednesday night, last night, no weather issues, but some other issues between the Padres well, and the Dodgers. Carlos Quentin, for some reason, don't know why he decided whatever Grinky said, he went out. And you can see Grinky tried to, you know, put that left shoulder into him, and it's the worst thing he could have done right there. Quentin, a big man, for some reason, you know, don't know why Quentin ran out there, but there's an ugly sight. Today, Zach Grinke ended up having surgery on that left collarbone. He's going to be out for about eight weeks. Uh, both benches cleared, of course. The Sanford Health injury report. Uh, the Dodgers have just signed Grinke to a long-term deal. They're going to have to be without him now for, what, roughly two months, I would guess. Strike one to Valdez Bean. I, I, you know, last thing you want to do is see a, a somebody go out to the mound and start that type of rhubarb. But... Uh, I just don't know why Grinky wanted to, you know, go shoulder to shoulder with that, that well, big monster. But guys coming at you now. You told me before, 23 years pitching in the bigs, no one ever charged the mound against no. you. But what are you supposed to do if you're a pitcher? Well, you kind of stand there and let them come, and then you take your, your then you take your swings as quick as you can. <laughs> you don't try to go, you know, bump to bump with them because you look at the size of Carlos Quinn. Plus he had all the momentum going into him. And that's going to squirt through the hole. Valdez Bean is two for two. Started the first inning with a single and that triggered a five run inning. No, I never had I never had anybody charge me, but I did charge them out in Philadelphia. And I got a swing in. You did? Yeah. Against who? Uh, Kevin Sache. After I threw some pitches in on Mike Schmidt, I didn't hit him. Mike took offense to it. We he was he was going down to first. Well, first this was Mike Schmidt. Mike Schmidt. You were right. messing with Mike Schmidt. Yeah, yeah. And, and the next time I came up, he hit me in the, in, the, in the hip, and I went out. And then what happened? We talked. Shook <laughs> hands. Yeah. yeah. Asked him why he hit me. Here's a deep drive to right off the bat of Murphy, off the wall, and Valdez Spin will just gain second base. So Murphy absolutely wearing out Vince Worley before the trade to Minnesota. He has seen two pitches from Worley and picked up two more hits. Well, I think it helps too where those pitches are. Murphy hitting this ball high to right field and a breaking ball that just kind of hung right there. Murphy getting underneath it. He's 12 for 17 against Vance Worley. Need Zach Grinky here. <laughs> Here's David Wright, double to the gap in left center field, drove in a couple of runs. I think you saw Rick Anderson on the phone. Pedro Hernandez is going to get loose again. Ball one. But go back to that Quinton thing. Carlos Quinton gets hit a lot because he stands right on top of the plate. He About does 20 times a year. Right. So why he went out uh, was beyond me. He should be suspended for a long period of time. Not as much as Don Mattingly has said. <laughs> as long as Grinky's out, he should be out. That's well, the Don situation hardly uh, was suspicious for an intent by the pitcher to hit the batter. The 3 2 count in a one run game in the sixth inning. Right. There's Pedro Hernandez getting loose again. 2 0 oh to right. And a liner to right field, a base hit. Valdez being around third. He'll score in the second inning, starting like the first. Well, David Wright knocking in his third run of the ball game on his second hit, a two run double in the first inning. Valdez being scoring for the second time. Seven hits in the first 12 plate appearances. There's been a walk and an error. Fastball right there. And everything he's throwing up is just getting hit. Rick Anderson's second trip to the mound, and this uh, would imagine as much as anything is to buy uh, Hernandez some time to warm up. Remember when Pelfrey gave up five innings against the Royals, he wanted to go back out there for the second inning and did. Then he wanted to go back out for the third, and the Twins said, no, that, that's right. enough. And here you've come back with a couple of runs in the bottom of the first inning to make it 5 2. And that's the bad part. And then that's you come back and give up three hits again. Right. That's uh, that's the ball bad part right there. Runners are first and third now. And, you know, the, your team fought back to get two instead of being down three. Now the Twins are down by four. 
First and second, nobody out, and here's Ike Davis who drew a walk his first time up. Off the plate, ball one. A frustrating game for Worley who endured his opening day start against the Tigers. Gave up three earned runs in six innings, a quality start, but left the ball game trailing three to one. Two and oh. Uh, his two plus years with the Philadelphia Phillies before getting traded over here, he already had faced the Mets eight times. This is his eighth start against the Mets. He has faced the Mets more than any team at the major league level. He's beaten them three times, but they've also beaten him three. And coming into this game, as I mentioned, in seven starts, a three and three record with a 5.17 ERA. So not too many pretty games against the Mets. 50 pitches, 29 strikes for Worley. Two and one to Ike Davis. Three and one. And John Buck on deck. And Ike Davis, of course, the son of former twins Ron Davis. As we call him his teammates, RD. Saved 130 games for the twins. Oh, speed pitch on three and one. Gets a swing and a miss. Yep. Talked to Ike before the game today. His uh, mother Millie is here somewhere is bundled up at Target Field. And his dad Ron stayed home in Arizona. I can't imagine that. <laughs> Three and two. Foul back. Warley now with 53 pitches. Looking for. Is first out of the second inning. Breaking ball foul away. That Hernandez is warming up brings to mind what the Twins are procedurally going to do and why they are waiting as long to do it as they are. Scott Diamond is going to be activated in time for tomorrow's game, and it's assumed. That either Hernandez or Liam Hendricks will be sent down to make room for Diamond. But while everybody wants to know who's it going to be to make room for Scott Diamond, the Twins, of course, are saying, well, look, we'll make that decision. We may have made the decision, but we won't make the move until absolutely necessary because of what's unfolding in front of us here tonight. I think what we're seeing out of the staff right now, Dick, is that you see Correa. We saw Pelfrey. We've seen Worley. They're not strikeout type pitchers. Even Liam Hendricks. That pitch count mounts because they cannot get that third pitch by somebody. Right. Fouling a lot of pitches off. We saw it from Liam Hendricks a couple of days ago. Also from Mike Pelfrey in that two innings that he went. He didn't. He had one strikeout, but they fouled off so many pitches. 62 pitches he had to throw. And another foul here. And what they're doing, they're leaving too many pitches up that hitters can foul off. A la Scott Baker when Baker was here, always that high fastball. They're not making that good pitch down in the strike zone. This is the 10th pitch of this at bat with nobody out in the second. And time called by Joe Mauer. And Joe Mauer will go through a new set of signs here with a runner at second base. Worley needs something good to happen right here. He might find himself out of the ballgame. Ball four fills the bases. And that'll be it for Vance Worley. Unable to get it out in the second inning after a five run first. And Worley ends up throwing 56 pitches, 33 strikes, 13 plate appearances. Retiring just three batters. So Worley comes off the mound, and Pedro Hernandez inherits a mess in the second inning.
innings here tonight. One plus inning, seven hits, six runs so far, four earned runs, a couple walks and a strikeout. And Pedro Hernandez coming in. He started the game in Baltimore. His first twin start. He ended up pitching five innings in that outing through 83 pitches. Twins ended up winning that ball game four to three. Hernandez got a no decision. You can still join the twin season ticket family and hit the sweet spot. Purchase any of the twin season ticket packages. Receive 10% off all food, beverage, and merchandise bought at Target Field. Call 833 Twins. Visit twinsbaseball.com. Check out the option to learn about the benefits to come along with twin season tickets. Loaded up. A 6-2 ball game. Nobody out. And here's John Buck. Corner infielders up, middle infielders back. And if nothing good happened with Vance Worley on the mound, the Twins need something good to happen with Pedro Hernandez on the mound. Well, Hernandez coming over in the Francis Francisco Liriano trade last year, along with Eduardo Escobar. In his start in Baltimore, he showed a fastball, low 90s slider, very good changeup, and a slow curveball. Foul back. He had that one bad outing, the second inning, where he gave up three runs. Uh, one, and then after that, he settled and down nicely and retired the last seven batters he faced before he was taken out after five innings. One bad inning. A pitch up and in. Good fastball right there, just above the, the hands of John Buck. 24 years ago today, in Barquis Simeto, Venezuela, Hernandez was brought into the world. So it's a huge day for Pedro. As you know, birthdays are huge. He needs a good birthday present right here. Get out of this situation. Twins come back and get him a win. Fouled back. Went back inside again, but fouled it off. Hernandez made that start in Baltimore because Cole DeVries was put on a disable list. DeVries are there and he and the rest of the Twins roster. The Twins welcome home luncheon put on by the Minneapolis and St. Paul Chambers of Commerce. Good job emceeing that too. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's always fun to be there. Two and two. And honestly, I was told when I got here this morning, 7 30, there was still snow on the field. And and we were getting ready for the banquet around 11 o'clock. They were cutting the grass. <laughs> and I thought to myself, only in Minnesota would the same people be in charge of snow removal as cutting the grass. <laughs> they did a great job. Yes, here. they did. And everybody that helped clear this stadium. Two and two to John Buck. And Maurer can't quite hang on. The bat still very much alive. Just got a piece of it, tipped it straight back, and fell out of the glove of Joe Maurer. See how cold it is right there. You almost see the rosy cheeks of Joe Mahler. Twins have been in the field for a long time. There's still nobody out here in the second inning. And he missed the inside corner. That fills the count with Duda on deck. Buck came up with the Kansas City Royals back in 2004, then spent time with the Blue Jays and Marlins. Again, in his first season with the Mets. Full count. That's hit a long way to left field. 
A grand slam home run for John Buck, his fourth home run in the last four games. And a five run first has been followed by a five run second. I mentioned about John Buck in his first at bat. He's been red hot. A fastball right there that stayed up, and Buck got the barrel of that off quickly. And it's a 10 to 2 Met lead. So Buck now with 19 RBIs on the year. And now here's Lucas Duda. Swing and a miss. The log complete now on Vance Worley. One inning plus. Nine runs allowed, eight of them earned. Two strikes. You're saying seven runs earned? Yeah, seven runs earned. That's what the official score said. Can, uh, discuss that off the air. I, had, I was sure there would be uh, four of the five in the first inning. At any rate, it's ten to two. That's all that really matters. One yeah. and two. That's the ugly part. Two and two. Yeah, so we devoted a good part of our pregame show in the open about how difficult it is to hit when it's cold. <laughs> We've got a dozen runs. Only six batters have been retired. Ten hits. Two and two. Dozier gets in front of it. First out of the second inning. And all those foul balls that John Buck uh, had to first get the count to three and two and then he teed off right see the fastball pretty much Joe wants it down the middle of the plate it was about belt high if not a little bit higher inside and Buck showing off his power Marlon Bird will bat Bird with a two run single Lifted high and deep to center. Hicks is going back. Playing the carom. Actually, it's played to Ramirez, and it'll be a triple for Marlon Bird. Hicks' first chance playing the carom off the scoreboard. And it was a hard carom, and Ramirez backing him up retrieves the ball and a one out triple now for Bird. Yeah, Marlon Bird, it took him almost up until February to sign with the Mets as a free agent. And Terry Collins coming out saying that that ball go into the uh, the flowers there. And second base umpire. Scott Barry saying no it did not it hit high off the wall. Let's see if we can tell on replay where the ball hit the wall. Hit uh, just above the scoreboard there. Let's have to bring the infield in here in a 10 to 2 ball game. Like Baxter popped up the ploof his first time up. Fouled back. Terry Collins there. He's in his third season uh, as manager of the Mets. Also, Mets managed the Astros and the Angels. Fastball off the plate, and it's one and one. Third. Out number two. 
And that'll bring up Tejada. Tejada ended the first inning with a fly ball to center. That sent nine batters to the plate in the first, and this is the ninth batter here to come to the plate in the second. <laughs> Got their ice fishing rigs. <laughs> Get ready for a fishing season. It's going to be this cold. You may as well be sitting on a bucket. <laughs> Again, what a sport. <laughs> One and oh. Two and oh. To out of playing at short for the Mets. Check swing and a foul. Two and one. A couple of years ago, Jose Reyes was their shortstop. They traded him to the Marlins. No, they signed as a free agent, I beg your pardon. And Reyes then was traded from the Marlins to Toronto. Two and one. Three and one with Valdespin on deck. Well, the Twins just a couple of games ago had the short start for Mike Pelfrey. A shorter start tonight by Vance Worley. Twins had the off day yesterday, but they're going to be counting on Hernandez to go a while here. Yeah, I hope so. To center, and Hicks will try to track it down. And a couple of bat around innings for the Mets, a couple of five run innings for the Mets, and it's 10 to 2. As we head to the bottom of the second, I'm here right now with a couple of diehard Twins fans. We've got Lynn and Pam. They are here from Shakopee. You guys have been going to Twins games for many, many years, but have you ever seen anything quite like this with the snow? Never. Never seen, been here in the snow, that's for sure, even at the old stadium. And you said you did go to games at Met Stadium, but, you know, never seen anything like this. So what is it like to be here braving the conditions? Awesome. It's cool. 
get great seats at a reasonable price. And Definitely. I have more clothes on now than I did on our ski trip to Utah in February. Absolutely. They are bundled up. We've got winter coats on, hats, gloves, scarves, the works, but we are having a great time, guys. Dick and Burke, we'll send it to you. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, bundle up. Uh, you're wearing more clothes here than you wear when you go skiing. That's a testament to the weather here. We're in Minnesota. That's My right. goodness. Yeah. They have all the uh, Under Armour apparel. Here's Pedro Florimon. The first pitch temperature, by the way, was 34 degrees. 34. Kirby Puckett, good number. Up high, and it's one and one. Swing and a miss, one and two. Just missed the corner, two and two. Yes, with that big lead, he did give up a couple runs on two hits in that first inning. Nearly to the backstop. Ball slipping out of his hand. Not enough pine tar. <laughs> Just a bit high. Floramon draws a walk and that'll bring Hicks to the play. The second walk of the ball game. Fans, you're going to be part of the broadcast. Vote for who you think is the Arby's value player of the game. Just text value with space. Then the player's last name to 234234. Let us know who you think had the most value in today's game and we'll tell you the winner of the post game show. Lopsided score, but maybe if nothing else, if the Twins don't come back, make a game of it or pull out a win, something good will happen for Aaron Hicks. Drew a walk after falling behind Jonathan Neese in the first inning and then later scored a run. Ball one. It's been my theory, and it's only a theory, and it's mine, so it doesn't bear any uh, relevation to anything. I mean, it's, it's just a theory. But I've thought for the last few games watching Hicks that if he ever got a hit, in his first at bat and relaxed a little bit he could probably then follow it up with some better at bats than he's been having and until it's proven otherwise I'm going to hang with that. Well no no I agree I agree with you Dick you know you just uh, sometimes you put too much pressure on yourself Tom Bernanski's tried to work with them the new hitting coach for the twins and calm them down but One sometimes when you struggle you find yourself in these situations time after time behind an account one ball two strikes. We saw it on the road in Baltimore, Kansas City. One and two. Wow, the way the best hitters in the world, and we're not proclaiming hits to be that certainly, but the best hitters in the world have a terrible batting average if the count gets to one and two. Well, you know, we were talking to Keith Hernandez before the game. He's the analyst for the New York Mets. On this road trip, and he said, you know, it took him three years to kind of feel like he belonged at the major league level. He said he struggled his first three years, and he had a great career. And Hicks takes to even the count. Somebody asked Ron Garden higher today about the, whether there was any thought moving Hicks out of the leadoff spot. Garden admitted, yeah, there was some thought, but they want to stick with this young man. In the hopes that he can fight through this at some point. The Twins figured he'd have to fight through a slump. Here's a drive to left center field. And it's caught on the run by Baxter and Hicks with one of his better swings, right. driving it a long way to the gap. Yeah. One of even, two even though that's an out, that's a positive right there because he made very good contact. Again, Timberwolves basketball on Fox Sports North Plus tonight. They're in Utah taking on the Jazz. They've just started, and the channels where you can find Fox Sports North Plus listed there. And if you don't see your carrier there, go to foxsportsnorth.com for complete listing. So two down, a runner at first, and here's Mauer. You know, getting a 
pat on the back from yeah. Tom Bernanke, but what Hicks wants more than anything yeah. else is for the hits to start coming. Right. This one going into the crowd, and that will allow Florimone to go to second base. A wild char uh, pitch charged to uh, Jonathan Ness. Watch Buck trying to get in front of it to stop it, and kind of rolled right up him and then into the stands. Mauer doubled and scored in the first inning. Fastball, one on one. Jonathan Nice, his pitch count up there 44 pitches, 22 strikes. Slow breaking ball over the outside corner. It's one and two. Mets have some holes to fill in their rotation, but they do feel that they've got uh, one spot covered with Jonathan Neese. And then tomorrow's starter, too, Matt Harvey. Can't wait to see him. He's really lit up the National League uh, with a couple of outstanding efforts already this year. One and two. I think we all were hoping that another Met left hander, Johan Santana, would start in this series. But of course, Santana's season over with before it started and some people are concerned that it will be the end of his career the second shoulder surgery it's tough to come back from one sole shoulder surgery and he's, he's got to try to come back from the second I actually got a haircut yesterday because I knew Johan was not uh, with the Mets <laughs> on this trip one and two and Bauer lines it to right so a couple of well hit balls but the twins leave a runner at second and after two it's ten to do Your link to what's next by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. A couple of five run innings for the Mets. Pedro Hernandez starting his first inning uh, of work, his first full inning. And the Twins linked with a couple of trades, the most notable being Frank Viola being dealt after his Cy Young Award year in 1988. And Rick Aguilera, Kevin Tappany, David West, three members of the 91 World Championship ball. Right. 
and a couple of other pitchers that also made it to the major leagues. And I can't remember since any trade where one pitcher brought back five pitchers that all made it to the major leagues. I don't know right. if that was ever done before or since in baseball. Strike one and strike two. Yeah, two good breaking balls by Hernandez. Yeah, you hate living, leaving, a, losing a guy like Frank Viola. He just won the Cy Young in '88. But look what they got in return. A couple years later, their second World Series championship here in Minnesota. There were some protracted, ugly contract negotiations between the Twins and Viola. They finally got it settled, and then shortly after that, Frank was dealt to the Mets. One and two. To Valdespin, who's triggered two five run innings. A single in the first, a single in the second. He scored a couple of runs. Poked foul. Still two and two. Viola now, by the way, a pitching coach in the minor league system for the Mets. The Sand Nats in Class A baseball. Two and two to Valdis Bean. Full count with Murphy on deck. Murphy's already got a couple of hits and a couple of runs scored. It's been an ugly start to this series. Vance Worley knocked out without retiring a batter in the second. And another foul ball. Fair to call Pedro Hernandez as you were describing. Pelfrey, Worley, and Correa pitch to contact starters. Hernandez relieving today. He's that type of pitcher as well. Foul ball. This one might be playable for Bluth. And our AT&T Twitter poll tonight: Who was the better acquisition in the Frank Viola trade to the Mets? Rick Aguilera or Kevin Tappany? Who got a critical starter for the Twins? Kevin Tappany, and then Rick Aguilera, who eventually uh, moved into the closer's role with the Twins. Breaking, uh, breaking ball. Use the hashtag and the pitcher's name, and we'll give you the results later on. Daniel Murphy saw two pitches from Vance Worley and got two hits. One and one. Johan Santana, after his two Cy Youngs with the Twins, traded to the Mets before the final year of his contract with the Twins. And of those players, the only one still in the Twins organization is Deolis Guerra, but he won't pitch this year after having that rib resection surgery. Right. One and two. Murphy slices one foul. Pass to Murphy in the clubhouse level at the clubhouse level this afternoon when he was walking in and everybody bundled up. And as you said, it doesn't get a whole lot nicer. In fact, it may actually get worse for the Mets. They've got to go to Colorado where they're predicting temperatures in the 20s. Popped up near the mound. Loof with the catch, two away. April 15th, a special day around the major league, marking Jackie Robinson's historic debut. Join the Twins in honoring the memory of Jackie Robinson on Diversity Day at Target Field. The first 5,000 fans get a Twins Diversity Day t shirt. Call 833 Twins or visit twinsbaseball.com for your tickets to the Diversity Day game against the Los Angeles Angels. Yeah, all those shots you saw right there at the uh, Negro uh, Museum in Kansas City. One hopper to Florimo and a one, two, three, third inning.
bottom of the third. Really, everybody here at Target Field trying to stay warm tonight. But one thing the Twins are doing to help people stay warm is a thank you to all the fans who made their way out to Target Field tonight. They are actually offering free hot cocoa and coffee at every gate here. I actually went and grabbed one myself because... It is cold, we're not going to lie, but the Twins, again, saying a big thank you to everyone by giving free hot cocoa and coffee. So if you know someone here at the game, might want to text them, give them a hint to go warm up, guys. Whatever it takes. That's right, Jamie. Stay warm. Thank, thank you, thank you Jamie. Yeah. Josh Willingham leads off the Twins third, ball one. Willingham, Morno, and Dolma, the three, four, and five batters. And Nice delivers one at the knees, one and one. <laughs> there you go, you are here by Circle Snowman. <laughs> Emphasis on the burr part. Down low, two and one. Well, now you're fashionably attired in the stocking cap there. Yes. And I saw you wore gloves before. Yes. You found a pair of gloves. Oh, we have a little heat coming down, so it kind of helps a little bit here. Three and one to Willingham. And you have your gloves on? Yeah, yeah. Windows open. We, at least I still get you know, questions from on Twitter wondering if we're going to have the windows open. We're doing a lot better than the Mets. They have their window closed. This one driven to deep right center field. Chased by Valdespin. Making the catch on the warning track. The Twins have hit some uh, balls hard here, second time through the order against Nice, but they've all been caught. Elvis Bean heading go a long way for this ball. Willingham hitting it deep. Well, you can see right there, 403, and had to catch it on the warning track. Now the Spina converted infielder. Now their center fielder, and he got there for the catch. Here's Morno. Strike one. Morno with a fly to short left, his first time up. One and one. Swing. And a foul. One and two. Two and two. Check swing bounces one down the line. He'll get a single with one out in the third. And it'll bring up Ryan Doman. Tonight's cold, hard fact and a good night for one of these. Brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Take a look at the coldest average game time temperatures around the league so far to start the season. Minnesota nice, Minnesota ice, and the Twins' uh, average game time temperature has. Taking a hit. I think that'll drop more. Yeah. We're hoping to get in the low 40s tomorrow. Sunday it's supposed to rain. And it's not supposed to get into the 50 degree range when the Angels come to town. Ball one to Ryan Doman, who was hit by a pitch his first time up. Quite a pitcher's duel in Cleveland. Justin Masterson winning a complete game shutout. Indians scored in the bottom of the ninth. They beat the White Sox one to nothing. Jesse Crane taking the loss. 2 and 0 to Domit. That looks like a sleeping bag. Did he bring a sleeping bag? Just crawled into it. <laughs> Swing and a miss. 2 and 1. I believe it is. Yeah. The youngster's got a look like a snowmobile suit on. Three and one to Doman with Pluth on deck. Yeah. 
And a walk will send Morno to second base. Yeah, third walk in the ball game for Jonathan Meese. Fox Sports North presents Kids in the City, supported by Buffalo Wild Wings, celebrating the accomplishments of the Boys and Girls Club youth at the ninth annual Kids in the City event, April 25th at Target Field. Enjoy an adult pre party at Fulton Brewery, silent auction, kids, interactive activities, and more. For sponsorship and tickets, visit foxsportsnorth.com. Click on North Supports under the More tab. The Twins need to take advantage of situations like this. Bluff with the power to cut into this net lead here, but first and second, one out. Bluff drove in a run with a single up the middle in the first. Strike on the outside corner. Missing a one and one. Sixty four pitches for Nice, and he split them in half half strikes, half balls. Fouled back one and two. Willingham hit a warning track fly ball to start the inning. Drove in a run with a grounder in the first. Now to hit the inside corner, but missed two and two. The middle. Murphy to Tejada. And Davis at first catches the throw just in time, and it's an inning, inning ending, a double play. Scenic snow globe effect here at Target Field. But uh, just a few flurries here. Outside, ball one to Ike Davis. John Buck and Lucas Duda will follow. To right field, Ramirez makes a catch. Davis quickly retired. Let's find Jamie Hirsch. 
Yeah, Dick, you mentioned that uh, the snow had been falling earlier. Stopped for now, but it's made for an interesting night here at Target Field. And we want to hear your thoughts on tonight's snowball. So uh, go ahead and tweet your thoughts using the hashtag snowball, and we will share our favorites on the broadcast. Could be weather-related, could be related to this game and what you've seen so far, but use the hashtag snowball, and we'll check in later. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jamie, very much. Uh, the Twins mid afternoon today uh, put a rush order in for some special buttons. I think you were given one too. Yes. Since this isn't really, well, it is spring, but it doesn't feel like spring. Blue fires across out number two. It feels more like winter. They uh, came up with these buttons. I survived sprinter. That's their term for what we've had to deal with here in baseball at Target Field. And it's uh, dated this weekend, April 12th through the 14th. Yeah, grass on one side and then uh, snow, snow on flakes the on the other. By the way, now you've got the, the glasses and the stocking cap. I told you my theory before. Yeah. Does that make any sense to you at all? Coming from California, yes. Okay. It does. It's my theory, and it's just my theory, that, and it applies for me, anybody else, if you're wearing glasses, it gives your appearance an added 15 IQ points. Okay. Which, which I need. Which, uh, but if you wear a stocking cap, and it's true when I wear one too, you lose 20 IQ points. So I'm back to even. You're not, well, you're actually negative five. No, no, no. California math, we're even. Okay. All right. Now he's, I don't know about a, uh, a cowboy, cowboy hat with fringe on. That's minus 30. <laughs> <laughs> two down. All right. Now see, he, he looks. More intelligent, so does he with glasses on. A lot of smart people here tonight. <laughs> and they've lost all the ex bonus <laughs> IQ points with the stocking caps. Strike on the outside corner, a swing and a miss. Oh, yeah, our camera guys don't miss anything. No. <laughs> Brought a snowmobile here. And a good inning for Hernandez. He's doing his part. He uh, has had a pair of one, two, three innings. Very much appreciated by everyone at Target Field. <laughs> Part of their it said cold on there. For Pepsi fans of the game bundled up, enjoying uh, not the score, not the weather, just being at the ballpark. Yep, very nice. There's Wilkin Ramirez. He'll be followed by Brian Dozier and Pedro Florimo. Ramirez came up as the tying run after the five run first. Twins scored a couple, having a couple on. First and third, two down, and then Ramirez hit a ground ball to third. Two strikes quickly, and I misspoke earlier. Someone on Twitter was nice enough to correct me that this is uh, Ramirez's second start in right field. He had one in Baltimore. 
And he's down on strikes. One down. And Neath picking up his first strikeout of the ball game. You can't get into the game at Fox Sports North. We'll talk baseball. Go to carsoup.com slash baseball. Offer up a question. James and Mankato has one. Do you like having interleague baseball scattered throughout the season? Well, you have to now with 15 teams in uh, both leagues. No way around it. Ron Gardner said it's different. The good thing is for the Twins, they're not playing in a National League city where they have to get their pitchers ready to hit this early. And the revised schedule where there has to be an interleague series all through the season. Dozier driving one to right center field. And snagged out there by Bird, two down. Yeah, Myron Bird, oh my goodness, he showed off his speed right there. He covered some ground quickly. Dozier gave it a ride, but Bird hustled after it, made a nice running catch. That'll bring up Florimo. The different schedule this year probably impacts the Twins the least because they are all done in National League cities about the time they typically have been in June, which means their pitchers can put the bats away for the last three months. That's not true. For uh, with the Tigers, I right. believe, have a uh, interleague series to end the season. Florimo is retired, thought he beat it out. Six pitches and a one, two, three, bottom of the board. I'm over here right behind the Twins dugout in the Minnesota Lottery Winner's Circle. We've got a great Circle Me Burt sign. And another sign you guys are going to love. It says spring is here just as the snowflakes are starting to pick up. Once again, I'm joined by Gary from St. Paul. Gary, tell me. A little humor going into these signs here tonight. Oh, just a little with the snow, you know. We thought we'd throw it in there, so, yeah. All right. Well, uh, you are the uh, lucky winner of our $100 worth of Minnesota Lottery scratch-off tickets. Thank you for making your Circle Me Burnt sign. Spring is here, believe it or not. Not a problem. <laughs> Even, I'm going to have to give you a little bit of a hard time because Burt is actually spelled wrong, and I know he'll point it out, but hey, we'll give it to you anyway. Burt. Only give him half. <laughs> they, oh, he says he's only going to give you a half circle. <laughs> All right. Well, we're having fun out here. Spring is coming, guys. Thanks, Gary. Aaron Hicks retreating in a deep fly ball to center. One thing that Hicks does that we did not see Ben Revere or Denard Spann or Torrey Hunter or anybody else do, Hicks will turn his back on a fly ball, run to the spot he thinks the ball will land, and then look up, and so far he's been right every time. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that takes a lot of practice, and it's just uh, good baseball sense right there. Uh, Bird hit that ball sharply, but it was deep enough to allow Hicks to go back, and that's what he—that's what he did. He—he he put his head down, knew where that ball was going to land, and then spun around. Okay, pick it up, and he's right there. 
something he would not dare try at the Metrodome. <laughs> one and one. It's drafted number one uh, by the Twins when the Twins were still playing at the Dome. Strike on the outside corner, one and two. Well, Hernandez has settled down nicely. He's retired nine straight Mets. He's thrown strikes. And another one hit towards left center field. And Willingham makes that catch. He got all three outs in the second. One, two, three inning in the third. Another one in the fourth. Good start to the fifth. And he's only thrown 51 pitches. If you just joined us, Vance Worley gave up five runs in the first. There was an error. You're telling me just three of the runs in the that's, first were. That's what the okay, well, we'll finish. go with that, even though I counted four. And then uh, Worley never did retire a batter in the second. And Hernandez came in, gave up a grand slam. So that second inning became a five run inning. And neither team has scored since. Here's Ruben Tejada. Two outfield flies to Aaron Hicks. He's just along for the ride so far. Ten runs, nine hits for the Mets. And Baxter's 0 for 3. And right. Tejada's 0 for 2. Yeah, even though Tejada's 0 for 2, he's made a couple very nice defensive plays. That turn of a double play couldn't have been made any better. And then the, in the last inning, with right cutting in front of him, he was able to get that ball off the uh, bat of uh, Florimone and get him at first base. So sometimes you don't help offensively, but you do on the other side. Down and away, and it's one and two. Changeup just rolled out of the strike zone. It's a circle change. It almost acts like a screwball, and it looked like he put it very near the outside corner, but just missed. Two and two. And a liner in the right field for a two out hit. And that'll bring up Valdez Bean. Tejada picking up his first hit and the tenth for the Mets. It's ten to two Mets. Only in the top of the fifth. You know, I suppose we ought to, and we haven't done enough of it, commend the ground crew for the relentless work that they took. And I, it's, it was a rhetorical question I asked you today how many man hours and woman hours did it take to get this field even playable for tonight's game? But then beyond that, I think too the the people who designed the ballpark deserve some credit too for the drainage. I asked uh, one of the grounds crew members today, so you know what happens if we get rain on Sunday? Can this field hold rain? I said, well, absolutely. It just drains through. It, there, there, it doesn't puddle up to center field. The Hicks will get another chance. They did a great job here. And so has Pedro Hernandez as he takes the game through the fifth inning.
And the homestand uh, begins tonight with the boys back in town, and it's been a thumping so far. Twins hitting in the bottom of the fifth. Aaron Hicks will lead things off. First pitch, bouncer to short, backhanded by Tejada, low throw. That gets by Davis, and Hicks will go to first base on a throwing error. So Hicks swinging at the first pitch, putting it in play, and reaching on an error. Yeah, Tejada's had trouble that way. That's his fifth error of the year. And plenty of time to set up and then threw it low in the dirt that skipped on Davis. And Hicks hustling down that line. Stays at first base. And now Maurer. Maurer with a double to left field into the corner and then a line drive to Murphy. Or to a right rather. To Joe's stung the ball twice. One and oh. And a strike. One and one. The Twins hoped at the start of the year there would be many situations like this. Hicks leading off reaching by whatever means. They hoped he would hit, hoped he would walk. He hasn't done enough of either, but he's aboard. And then Maurer hitting second over Maurer's head. Two and one. And you look at Maurer and the RBI total, the only run batted in on the home run in Kansas City, the solo home run. But then you realize that, I mean, Hicks hasn't been on base. They haven't been able to get this lineup going. And it starts with a leadoff man. Ball strike, a delay call, two and two. That ball looked a little low right there, and Joe, I'm sure, I'm questioning that call. Earlier in this ball game, I think in his first at bat, he questioned the call up and in. Mike Devers saying that low fastball was a strike. Two and two. And why not try it again? Three and two, Willingham on deck. As awful as the start. Is for the twins. We've seen Nice struggle with his control from time to time. We just hope the twins can keep building some opportunities and then take advantage of them. We'll see what Maurer gets here on three and two. And it's ball four. So there you go, an error. Twins hoping to take advantage of that and the walk. Willingham up with two men aboard. Yeah, for Jonathan Nice, that's his fourth walk of the ball game. We want to congratulate our good friend and broadcast partner Roy Smalley, who a long, long, long time ago played for USC, and he's one of the best in the business. Yeah, it wasn't and that long ago. The other day, uh, named to the National College Baseball Hall of Fame, first team All American shortstop back in 1973. Congratulations, my friend. Yes. Congratulations, Roy Smalley. Here's Willingham drove in a run with a ground ball. Pitch in the dirt, Buck with a nice block. And then leading off the third inning, Willingham hit one about 400 feet from home plate, but it was caught by Valdespi. Side corner, and it's one and one. Whatever. Strike two call. He's going back in there again to get a called strike. And yeah, this time a fastball inside. Scott Atchison warming up. Nice needs to complete five innings here to qualify for a win. He's thrown 83 pitches so far. Slow breaking ball and Willingham taps it foul.
Hicks at second, Maurer at first. Twins have had some opportunities to jump back into the game. Left a couple of men on in the first, a couple of men on in the third. Lorimone. Close to the heater as he can get. Just missing the inside corner. It's two and two. He's nearly hit that inside corner again. Yeah, he got strike two in there and he went in, but this side a little bit inside. Must have been a few times in your career where you were out there riding a big lead and for whatever reason, cold, whatever. You look over your shoulder and there's somebody warming up in the fifth inning. Well, I'm sure there was. I don't recall, but uh, I'm sure there was. I'm sure. Just happy to go five. Right. Never happy to go five. <laughs> nine. Well, you know where the pitch count today is mentioned earlier, what 86 pitches down for Jonathan Nice. You know, the conditions are not the best here. You know, Nice came in with the reputation of throwing strikes. He's already walked four in this ball game. Only one strikeout. Full count to Willingham, nobody out. Twins hoping to put something together here in the fifth. Old foul. But the twins have only managed three hits. I would imagine one of the factors in warming up Atchison now is a cold night, and if things start slipping away from knees control or otherwise, it will take Atchison a little longer to get warmed up. Morno on deck. Fly ball left field. And Baxter comes in and makes the catch. One away. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. And now Justin Morno, fly ball to left, and a check swing single to left. To right field. This is back and off the wall. And Maurer will be held at third, and it's an RBI double on maybe the hardest ball Morno has hit this year. Yeah, I agree. I'm just going to say that. We have not seen a lot of this off the bat of Justin. He got a fastball right there, ready to hit on that first pitch, and he clobbered it high against the wall out in right center. His third double of the year, he picks up his fourth RBI. That ball right there, right into the swing of Justin. Boy, he gave it a ride. And maybe a couple, two, three feet short of hitting his first home run of the year. Now Domit has reached twice. He's been hit by a pitch and a walk. Tapper foul. Swing right there by Justin. Oh, missed it by about a foot. Yep. Now two quick strikes and foul balls off the bat of Dolan. Well, the ball was gone on the left home plate, and it almost did leave the yard. Oh, inches. From disappearing into the Jim Tomey flower bed. <laughs> to center, down for a hit. Mauer will score. They're going to wave Morno. Here's the throw from Val to Spain. And it's a two run single in a 10 5 game. Buck claiming that he tagged Morno on the slide. And now here comes Terry Collins. That was a closer play than anyone thought it would be, and a closer play than Joe Vavra wanted. Given Morno's history and their 
very squeamish about sending him if there's any chance for a close play at the plate. But Doman drives in two and it's a 10 5 game. Well, Justin kind of had to go around a buck to make the attempt of the tag. And Doman picking up his first hit as a right handed hitter this year. It drives in a couple runs. Good strong throw. And Buck saying that he tagged the hand of Justin. Boy, it looked like he got the back, but it looked like maybe Justin got that hand over the plate. And he's saying that uh, Tag tagged him. Here's Plouffe. And a strike. It's a 10-5 game. Run with first one out. Plouffe drove in a run with a single and then bounced into an inning-ending double play. The plate one and one. Down low two and one. On deck, and Nice really wobbling here, trying to complete his fifth inning. Well, the air by Tejada really opened up this inning. The walk to Joe Maurer, then after with one out, Justin almost hit a home run. That's to left center field. Baxter with the catch and out number two, and again a pretty well hit ball. After the 10 runs are on the board, the Twins have hit the ball harder than the Mets have, and they're still down by five runs. Two down, here's Ramirez. Ramirez with a bouncer to third, and he went down swinging on three pitches on the four. Over the inside corner, strike one. Pitch number 100 for Nice. Whoa! The second time we've seen it this year. Ramirez has a great bat toss. Well, Ron Comer was talking, I think, in the pregame show about when you're up there hitting, sometimes it can be too cold for the pine tar to even do its job. And uh, whether that was a factor or not. Well, they're fighting over the bat. Might have to share the Wilkin Ramirez souvenir. Two strikes. And a bright, natural colored bat for Ramirez. A slow roller to second. That ends it. Close play at second. The Twins score three times. It's 10 5 after 5.
Mets in front. Move to the sixth inning. Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. Old night here at Target Field. <laughs> Fought through a really ugly start to this game, hoping the Twins can come back and make a game of it. It's 10-5. Daniel Murphy will lead things off against Pedro Hernandez, who came into the game in the second, gave up the grand slam to Buck, but has done very nicely, uh, done a really nice job since. Strike one. Murphy, Wright, and Davis in the sixth. Inside, one and one. And Hernandez, who has thrown a lot of pitches, 61 in a relief roll, can look over his shoulder and see the Twins warming up. Ryan Presley down in there, a bullpen. On the outside corner, one and two. Hi, Hernandez coming in, throwing strikes, 62 pitches, 40 for strikes. Hit the third hit for Murphy in the game. The NFL draft begins April 25th at Fox Sports North. Brian Hall is getting an early start on coverage beginning today. Read Brian's preview stories each day between now and draft night at FoxSportsNorth.com. Here's David Wright. A couple of hits, three runs batted in, a couple of runs scored. Strike one. Yeah, this guy kind of the uh, face of the franchise for the uh, New York Mets. Signed him to a long term contract, signed through 2020. Already in his 10th season with the Mets. Very high, one and one. Scoring three runs at the bottom of the fifth, an important inning for Hernandez and the Twins to put up a zero and see if the Twins can chip away at what now is a five run lead. Up a little bit. Of course, a different start time too tomorrow. Mid-afternoon start for Game Two of the series. And right fouls into the net. Yeah, right uh, always has that uppercut type swing. A lot of home runs, over 200 home runs in his career. Had a tough time hitting him in the New Mets ballpark, City Field. They brought the fences in before the start of last year. Now they've done that. In Seattle and at the Petco Park in San Diego, too. It looks like Hernandez would be tough to steal on. He's a left hander who has a high leg kick, but he kind of freezes. Pause. Yeah, freezes it a little bit, which if you're a runner at first, would I would think make it difficult to get a good jump. Yeah, Scott Diamond does the same thing. You know, left handers have the advantage of. Kind of hanging around that pitching rubber a little bit. Andy Pettit, one of the best at it. Bring that knee up. And then a little hesitation. And that runner just unsure. To pick up the knee. That was a little bit quicker. The yeah. time before, he kind of held it just for a second. Because on that one prior to that, Murphy actually went back to first. Two and two. Yeah. 
Bluth catches. There'll be no throw across. One away. Busted bat. Soft line drive for the first half. Yeah, good fastball in right there, and right pretty much jammed. Now Ike Davis, a couple of walks and a couple of runs scored. Davis born in Edina. After his uh, father uh, was traded from the Twins in early 1987, Ike was born uh, in Edina. So he spent some time today visiting. Uh, some early babysitters that he had saw the old home where he lived in very briefly. Doesn't have any memory of growing up here at all, but got a chance to meet some people that are, who, at a very early age for him, were important to him. Yeah, after uh, RD got traded, Ron Davis got traded, they may, ended up making their home in Arizona. Actually, that's where uh, Ike grew up, went to Arizona State University. Swing it a miss. And then was the Mets' number one pick in 2008. Time visiting with Ike about uh, some uh, hunting and fishing trips that I went on with his father, Ron Davis, a great outdoorsman. He loved living in Minnesota, great fisherman and hunter. Over for a strike, 0 and 2. Well, you can't quarrel with the job Hernandez has done here tonight. They've done a great job. Other than the grand slam he gave up to uh, John Buck, the first batter he faced. Up high and handle it. He wanted to. After making a start in Baltimore, probably not the situation he imagined his next major league appearance would be, coming in with nobody out and the bases loaded. Side two and two. Laura Ball to the mound. Well, 73 pitches. Yeah, I don't know if we got an injury problem no. here. It's the last thing the Twins need. Floramon actually asked for Ron Gardenhire and Rick Anderson and the trainer to come out here. Last year, after coming over in the trade. Lower half, nothing arm related. Almost looks like Bowers doing more of the talking than anybody else. Well, Presley has been warming up. By well, the way, he kind of moving around that left ankle, maybe he twisted his ankle a little bit. Doesn't appear to be the arm related at all. Going to relate that last year Hernandez had his season cut short with a shoulder situation, but yeah, it appears to be uh, okay. Rotator cuff strain. Florimon may be serving as an interpreter here. Well, Rick Anderson, I think, just wanting to make sure he's uh, okay, and they're going to go ahead yeah. and bring in Presley. Well, Hernandez has done a great job and gets an appreciative pat on the chest from. Ron Gardenhire and the encouraging thing it looks like it's foot or ankle related at least that's where they were looking and so Hernandez will come out and Ryan Presley will come in with one out of the six.
Ten five. The Twins uh, going to the bullpen one more time after a good outing by Pedro Hernandez. We'll try to get word as to what the situation is with Hernandez. Ryan Presley coming into the ball game and he's made quite a first impression. Yeah, Ryan Presley was getting up anyway. He may have had to come in to face John Buck. You know, maybe uh, in that situation. So he's loose. See the numbers on Presley. Very good so far, making his fourth major league appearance. So far, so good. He inherits a 2 2 count in the Ike Davis at bat. And now 3 and 2, Maurer with a block. And Presley. Uh, had he not been warming up, would have been given a, all the time he needed to warm up on the game mound, but just the standard, I think, eight pitches, and he's ready to go. Well, we've seen a good fastball, big curveball from Presley. Murphy goes to the pitch sky to left. Willingham waits. Out number two. And that'll bring up John Buck. Buck reached out an air. A ground ball that skipped through the legs of Trevor Plouffe in the first inning. And then he plumped the grand slam against Hernandez in the second. Mets haven't scored since. That's the good news. Bad news is Ron Gardner's team hasn't been able to get back yet. Shake of the head side to side. We'll certainly hope that Pedro Hernandez is okay. And now it's Presley's job to try to chew up a few innings here. Down low ball one. Well, in that second inning on a 3-2 pitch, the first hitter that Pedro Hernandez faced. John Buck hit the grand slam. Into the second level here at Target Field. His sixth home run of the year. And fourth in the last four games. And a ball strike one and one. Buck doesn't believe that breaking ball hit the strike zone at all. But again, he wasn't too happy with the Morno safe call either. It looked like a little cut fastball right there. And Joe Maurer maybe uh, got crossed up there. Out to talk to uh, Ryan Presley. Presley wants to know the count. When Mike Pelfrey lasted just a couple innings in Kansas City the other night, the Twins were able to get through the balance of the game using just two pitchers, two other pitchers, and that will be the hope here. Fastball missing inside. That's where Anthony Swarzak came in, pitched very well for four innings, and then Ryan Presley two shutout innings. So in an ideal world with the Twins having five games in the next five days they'd like to not to cut through the bullpen any more than they have to. Bouncer to third. Bluff fires across and Morneau with the tag got him on the hip. Buck retired and it's another scoreless inning in the top of the sixth.
back around the league. Starting in Cleveland, Nick Swisher with a walk off, a base hit down the line, a 1 0 Indian win over the Chicago White Sox. And then in New York, first triple play at Yankee Stadium in a long time, it went 4 6 5 6 5 3, three 4. <laughs> wow. First Yankee Stadium triple play for the uh, Yankees since 1968 when they did it against the Twins. Well, Scott Atchison comes out of the uh, Mets bullpen, and he'll face Brian Dozier here in the sixth. Yeah, Atchison, a veteran. Uh, Twins saw a little bit about him with him when he was with the Mariners and the Red Sox, also pitched for the Giants in his first season with the Mets, making his fifth relief appearance. Dozier over two. He'll be followed by Florimone and Hicks. There's a liner to the second baseman. And Murphy with the catch one away. That'll bring up Florimone. Florimone with a walk and a ground ball to short. And Jonathan Neese worked the first five innings. Gave up five hits. Five runs, four earned runs with four walks and a strikeout. Belt high strike. So his uh, consecutive quality starts. He had 10 consecutive quality starts in a row. That uh, that stops, but uh, you know, he's got a five run lead as he leads his ball game. One and one. Just off the edge, two and one. And that's rolled foul past Trovopper. Just looking it up. In 1968, the first triple play that the Twins ever hit into was in the eighth inning. And it went Dooley Womack. And I, would it have been Bobby Cox in 1968? To Mickey Mantle. Johnny Roseboro hit into a triple play. Full count to Florimo. Great catch by David Wright. Diving to his left, he takes a hit away from Florimo. Uh, inside out right there by Florimo. And Wright going to his left. Dow dove for it. Made a nice play. Reaction by David Wright, two time gold glove winner. So, two down here in the sixth, a couple of soft line drives, and here's Hicks. Goes after the first pitch again and fouls it back. Three plate appearances and a couple of runs scored, no strikeouts. And within all that, just the Nugget of something positive so far with Hicks trying to break out of a an epic career starting slump. Breaking ball missing and it's one and one. In the second inning, he had a drive to the gap in left field that was snagged by Baxter. Now inside and it's two and one. Has already had a discussion with Ron Gardenhire about what the manager saw on the drop pop fly in Kansas City. Perceived lack of hustle. Here's a drive to center field, actually a short pop up, and Valdespin with the catch. Three up, three down for Atchison in the play six.
innings to get things started. Yeah, Vance Worley just did not have it today. He gave up five runs, three earned runs in that first inning, unable to get out of the second. There's the air right there by Floof, a couple unearned runs in the first. Bird hitting the uh, two run single, made it 5 0. And then in the second inning, the grand slam off the bat of John Buck. Twins had a 10 to 2 lead. Or excuse me, uh, Mets had a 10 to 2 lead. Twins scored three in the bottom of the fifth. It's 10 to 5. Twins need one of those five run innings here pretty soon. Here's Lucas Duda facing Ryan Presley. And the dirt ball one. Duda, Bird, and Baxter in the Mets seventh inning. How'd you fare against the Mets in your years with the Pittsburgh Pirates? You have any idea? No. No memorable games? No. No. <laughs> what do you think I am? Jim well, Palmer I, or something? I don't know. I just, you know, I mean, now, Palmer would remember every pitch he ever threw to a Met, but I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I did. Did you enjoy pitching at Shea Stadium? You uh, enjoyed pitching everywhere, I know, yeah. but well, what was it like to pitch in that ballpark? It was a nice ballpark. Didn't like giving up a home run because that big apple came out of the, <laughs> out the outfield. Spent more time up in the air than it did. <laughs> yeah. It made me hungry for an apple. Three and one to Lucas Duda. To look it up now, see how he did. And a walk starts the seventh inning. And that'll bring up Marlon Bird. Bird with a two run single in the first and then a triple in the second. Bird in his first season with the Mets brings a lot of experience with him. He made the All Star team when he was with the Cubs in 2010. Signed as a free agent. Mauer again out to make sure that the, the signs that they're using. Now, what the Twins do with a runner in first base, they use more than one sign. You want to make sure uh, that you and your catcher are on the same page. Now, I've just been told that you were five and three against the New York Mets. I faced them that many times? With a two think point would... something, 2.92 earned run average with sure. four complete games. Wow. And you, you, you <laughs> forgot that? Those are great numbers. Well, I started about 700 games, so I'm sorry I forgot that one or those. No, these would have been the Mets of uh, late 70s. Uh, yeah, they weren't very good. They weren't? No, not for me to go 5 and 3 with a 2.9 <laughs> ERA. Come on. <laughs> no, just kidding. All right, that's good. I, very nice. Two and oh. Had greater success apparently as a starter than a relief well, pitcher against them. You know what I I remember <laughs> about New York. We got some time here. I was not pitching, and Ed Ott was not catching, and we made a little golf course out in their bullpen with little flags because we thought you know during the ball game we could go play little golf out there. Well, on the big screen they had me putting, and Chuck Tanner saw that. And uh, a phone call came down, and I had to go down to the dugout. That's what I remember in New York. I got caught playing you, golf. You weren't paying there. attention to the ball game. You well, were we were watching between pitches. We were putting. <laughs> what a great nine-hole course, yeah, all so mapped you, you, out. You just this was out the holes. This was out in the bullpen. Yeah, right? with a bat and a ball, and we would yeah. Foul ground makes the catch for the first out. So I wasn't in the clubhouse eating chicken or anything like that. I was out playing, working on my golf swing. 
some people have the mentality to be a starting pitcher. Others, like Glenn Perkins, have the mentality to be a, a relief pitcher. Clearly, your mind was conditioned, programmed to be a starting pitcher. Too much idle time for you out in the bullpen. Maybe it's uh, maybe I should have wore glasses. <laughs> and no stocking cap. There's Mike Baxter. Ball one. Asked Ron Gardenhire the other day if Presley had the stuff to be a starting pitcher. And he said, well, it's not something they're considering at this point, but you know, down the road they really love this guy's arm and his uh, breaking pitches. Two and zero. Well, remember in the minor leagues he was a starter, and then last year they converted him to a reliever, and I think that that's what the Twins saw. You know, hey, here, here's a guy that has good stuff. He has a good strong arm. And in today's game, with the starters not going very deep, can they turn a double play? One. Oh, dropped by Florimone. Everyone's safe. Well, Florimone Second base umpire that. Scott Barry saying that he did not yeah. ever have control of the flip. Monero well, will be charged on Florimone. Florimone with his third error of the year. Maybe could have been a double play, a little backhanded flip, and the ball dropping out of the glove. It wasn't uh, during the exchange at all. So what could have been a, an inning ending double play instead gives the Mets a chance to add to the score here with Ruben Tejada at the plate. No, as I was saying Dick you know with the starters only going five or six what clubs are doing is really what the twins are doing. They're putting together a lot of long men. You know four or five guys in a bullpen that can throw more than two or three you know two innings at a time. Right. Presley one of those. Dunsing one of those Casey Thien can do that. Josh Renicky we've seen him do that and Anthony Swarzak. Foul back to strike. Presley, if he can feel the baseball at all, has a good strikeout pitch, his curveball. And he's in a situation suddenly here in the seventh where he may need a strikeout of the number nine batter. And it's lifted to right center field. Ramirez with the catch in front of Hicks. Tagging and going to third is Duda. The curve lofted in the air for out number two. Yeah, that curveball just stayed up right there. That will bring up Valdez speed. Go behind the scenes to see how Minnesota Vikings cheerleaders compete for making this year's team. Don't miss part one of a three part series. Minnesota Vikings cheerleaders making the team following the Twins post game show on Fox Sports North. And Ron Garden hired to summarize said, "Well, they haven't ruled anything out with him. They're getting their first look at him. But within the uh, non-answer was again the, the proclamation. They just really love this kid's arm, and he, they think he's got a great future at this level. He's one of those guys, a Rule Five pickup, who might not have to go back to the minor leagues. That's how good he's been so far. Outside ball one, uh, fastball right there at 92." A nice write up too in the paper, uh, the St. Paul paper, I think, yesterday about Presley and his relationship with his father, who was diagnosed with cancer, and how Ryan had a really tough time uh, dealing with that last year, and how that might have contributed to his struggles. And, uh, now you realize that baseball players are human yeah. beings too. You know. There's so many elements that go into sometimes your uh, your everyday approach to what you're trying to do. Two and zero oh to Valdez Bean. Three and zero oh Murphy on deck. Inning started with a walk, then there was an error on a ground ball. Murphy on deck already has three hits. 
the speen as a couple. Popped up out of the play. It's three and one. That's a green light right there. Three and all. I think we've seen tonight. Everybody against three and all. They're up there hacking. They're ready, waiting for that one pitch. Source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry. At Bat delivers Twins baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit twinsbaseball.com for details. Murphy the batter, a double, a single, and another single. And strike one from Presley. It might be warmer. I'm sure it is in Anaheim, but there's a lot of heat in Anaheim. Angels are really struggling, and now the Houston Astros have come to town and put a three spot up in the first inning. A drive to right center field. Ramirez back. Playing it off the base of the wall. Three runs are going to score, and the Mets lead is back to eight. And all these runs, unearned runs, because of the air charge to Florimo. Yeah, Daniel Murphy having quite a night. His fourth hit of the night. Driving in three runs there. His first three RBIs of the night. Now with nine on the year. And his fifth double. So a big two out. Three run double, high fastball. Murphy took it to the base of the fence, out at the 385 mark. David Wright, the batter. Ball one. Excuse me, the 365 mark. Regarding the Angels, Josh Hamilton isn't hitting. Albert Pujols is hobbled with plantar fasciitis. It's a strike. Angel pitching staff, even before Jared Weaver's injury, considered a, a little on the thin side. Angels come here after the Mets leave on Sunday. Here's a fly to deep right field. Ramirez going back at the wall. He can't make the play. Wright will have an extra base hit. It's another Mets run, and Wright wants a triple. And he'll be in with an RBI trip. So a four run inning. And that'll bring up Ike Davis. And David Wright driving in his fourth run of the ball game on his first triple of the year. Anderson coming out to talk to young Ryan Presley. So right with a two run double in the first inning, an RBI single in the second. Now adding an RBI triple in the year in the seventh. Pedro Florimont behind second base is talking with the second base umpire Scott Barry about the play with Brian Dunsing warming up. And uh, Barry made the right call. There's no question about that. It didn't look like Florimone ever had control of the ball. But I would imagine that's what that conversation is about. And Florimone's error has led to four unearned runs here in the seventh inning. Here's Ike Davis. 0 for 2 with two walks and two runs scored. Down low, ball one. Top five hitters for the uh, for the Mets have scored 12 of the 14 runs. One and one. Maybe when the Angels come to town, the Twins can win a series opener. 
look like they're going to get it done tonight. On the outside corner, one and two. Gone on strikes. And a four run seven makes it 14 to five. Up. Century Link to what's next, the heart of the Twins order. Yeah, the heart of the Twins order so far, three for eight with a walk. They've scored three of the five runs with a couple runs batted in. It'll be Mauer, Willingham, and Borno. Scott Atchison, who pitched a one, two, three, sixth inning, will go at the Twins here in the seventh. Strike one. Atchison, Atchison, a pretty valuable reliever for the Red Sox the last few years. Yeah, last year, 42 appearances out of that bullpen, a 1.58 earned run average. Signed by the Mets as a free agent over the winter. 37 years old, originally signed by the Mariners back in 1998. Foul back by Bauer, one of two. That guy can hit. It's amazing. <laughs> He's given the twins. Four good plate appearances here tonight. A line drive double, a line out. Wright made a nice play to spear his line drive in the second. A walk and now a sharp single here in the second. Well, you don't see him miss too many pitchers' mistakes. And this is a breaking ball that just stayed up. Well, a lot of guys will pop it up, but you see the breaking ball just kind of hung right there, just above the knees. And Joe, as he does so well, just takes the ball the other way. But I think you'll agree on the road trip, we saw Joe swing and miss far more than we've ever seen him in the past. Pitches up to Willingham. I'm sure Atkinson trying to get that ball down, but you see where that height of the ball is about thigh high, and Joe, with that beautiful swing, gets his second, second hit of the ball game. Down and away, two and zero. Oh. 
Willingham with an RBI ground out and a couple of outfield flies. One to the warning track in center field. This one skied in the air. And it'll come back and out of play. Mike Davis and Joe Maurer exchanging uh, comments perhaps about the weather. Yeah, I'm cold, are you? <laughs> Davis probably saying at least I had the good sense to get out of here when I was two years old. Move to Arizona. Two and two. Half swing. Good he go. No, says first base umpire Marty Foster. That's a good thing. The only thing that you can see out of Marty Foster is, is his eyes. Be bad if an umpire pulled him up over his eyes, wouldn't it? And a little bit of ear. <laughs> Full count to Willingham. That is a foul ball. Yeah, just got word that uh, Pedro Hernandez left with a left calf strain. And guess what he is? Day to day, Very perhaps. Good. Day to day, yes. Well, you wonder whether that will impact what the Twins uh, said they were going to do after the game today, make uh, the announcement as to who would be sent down to uh, make room for Scott Diamond on the 25-man roster. Toward the hole. Backhanded. Nice play by Tejada over to Murphy to retire Maurer at second base. You know, a couple times in this ball game, we have seen Wright go in front of Tejada, and both times Tejada able to concentrate and watch that ball rather than David Wright cutting in front of him. Another nice play by the shortstop Tejada. Watch David Wright just out of his reach, but Tejada gets the short hop and gets the lead run and out at second base. So Willingham reaches on a fielder's choice. One down in the seventh, and here's Morno. Morno with two hits. He really creamed the ball his last time up. He's picked up a few hits as his batting average would suggest, but he hasn't driven the ball very hard until his fifth inning at bat when he missed his first home run by inches. Almost into the flower bed. Can we call them flowers? They're probably frozen out. <laughs> well, they have, they're still blooming. Yep. Two quick strikes to Morno. Another one lofted to deep center. Valdespin retreating. And on the track, he makes the catch. So a deep fly ball to center, two away. And, and Justin got good wood on that ball. Now Doman will hit. Doman drove in a couple of runs with a single. He's reached all three times. Now four nothing Astros over the Angels in Anaheim. Things have already gotten ugly, so you can't even say things are getting going to get ugly there. But my goodness, the Astros go in there and win a couple of ball games. Oakland. Oakland did well. Yeah, they swept them. Swing and a miss. Tigers are leading Oakland three to nothing early in that ball game, trying to slow the A's down. One and one to Doman. Change up down and away. Two and one. Two. It was more like December 12th than April 12th. Between innings, the Twins have been playing selections from the Andy Williams Christmas album. 
It's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm waiting for jingle bells. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. People bundled up. There's a blast to right center field. Bird to the wall makes a catch to end the inning. Check your calendar. Maybe it is December 12. Social media, the subject, snowball. AJ says, three years ago today, I caught the first home run at Target Field. Hard to believe it is snowing. Hashtag snowball. We had another tweet come in that says, only in Minnesota do we play baseball when there is eight inches of snow outside. Hashtag twins baseball and snowball. And finally, from 52 songs, thanks Bert, Dick, and Jamie for keeping us smiling tonight. Snowball. What a <laughs> night, guys. <laughs> it has been a very uh, cool evening, a wintry evening. Thank you, Jamie. You are here by circle. And the, you know what? Nice turnout by the fans, too. Yeah, and uh, up until the four yeah. run inning in the yeah. seventh, a lot of them hung yeah. around. Yeah. And happy birthday to you. Had a, a situation uh, in Cleveland. The, the Yankees and Indians were rained out back to back games. Now, remembering that even within the American League, outside your division, Brian Dunsing into the ball game for the sixth time. Outside your division, you only make one trip to each city. So, as cold and snowy as it's been here, at least the game has been played somehow. The Indians and Yankees have to find some means of making up two games because the Yankees don't go back to Cleveland. Yeah, I was talking to Dave St. Peter. He was over with uh, Dan Gladden, and we talked about tonight's game. He said if the weather was going to be nicer, say tomorrow and Sunday, they may have canceled this game. Postponed it. Postponed right. it. Right. And then, be, but because of the weather forecast more for Sunday, that they had to play tonight. Same situation the Twins ran into on opening day when all the talk was it's going to be really cold and too cold to play baseball. It was only going to be marginally better the next day when there was an off day schedule. Right. So it's uh, in a colder form here in Minnesota, but weather's been a big issue all around baseball in the opening weeks of the season. One and one to John Buck. Two and one. Hope is Dunsing can get through the next two innings here. Presley pitched an inning and two thirds, gave up four unearned runs. Six of the 14 runs the 
Mets have scored have been ruled unearned runs. And a strike. That slider kind of catching the corner right there from Brian Dunsing. Two and two. Just missing Ooh. inside. Well, Buck and uh, Mike Everett, the home plate umpire, have had some exchanges already today. That pitch looked like it was up and in. You liked it, didn't you? I liked that pitch. Oh, that was a strike? Yes. Did he catch it on the fly? It's a strike. Popped up, short left. Darren Mastroani's out there now, and he'll make the call and the catch. One away. Scott Diamond will make his 2013 debut tomorrow. He had his elbow cleaned out a little later than uh, would allow him to start the season on the active. Yeah, list. I mean, he had a great year last year 173 innings. A guy that likes to work quick. I uh, went out and watch uh, Matt Harvey out, off to a very good start for the Mets, but uh, we'll be welcoming uh, Scott Diamond back tomorrow. Matt Harvey's got a great slider. Some people are already saying he. As one of the best, if not the best, sliders in the National League. Here's Lucas Duda. No, it isn't. That's going to their bench as well. And Anthony Record getting it at bat as a designated hitter. A hint, perhaps, that Record might get the start tomorrow. Behind the plate. Off the end of the bat into the seats, checking to see if the bat's cracked. Looks like it is. Scott Diamond emerged as a reliable starting pitcher for the Twins in a year when they didn't have him. Yeah, 27 starts, 12 wins, and a guy that went deep. And I'm saying deep, six or seven innings every time out. You can really count on Scott Diamond, uh, especially from last year's staff, to be your ace. Two strikes to record. And now a ball. Wrecker in his first season with the Mets claimed off waivers from the Cubs over the winter. Came up with the Oakland A's in 2011. And Dunson with a breaking pitch down and in gets the swing and a miss. Two down. And that'll bring up Marlon Bird. Bird with a two run single in the first, a triple in the second, since then a fly ball and a foul out. You've probably noticed that the Mets, as a fly ball to right field, should end the inning. And Ramirez with the catch. We'll talk more about the, the All Star game going to City Field this summer when we come back.
Be sure to stay with us for our Twins Live postgame show presented by CenturyLink. We'll talk about how some crooked numbers doom the Twins tonight. We'll also take a look at how both teams brave the elements on a cold and wintry night here at Target Field. And, of course, we'll hear from skipper Ron Gardenhire. Guys. All right. Thank you very much. We'll look forward to that. The Twins hitting here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Yeah, new pitcher on the mound for the uh, New York Mets will be Greg Burke. Underarm type pitcher in his first season with the Mets, making his fifth relief appearance. He's worked a total of four and two thirds in. He's given up six runs, only three earned runs, with a couple walks and six strikeouts. Funky delivery. Jamie Carroll's first plate appearance. Pitcher had a similar de delivery who pitched for both the Mets and the Twins. Terry Leach, part of the 91 World Championship team. Two strikes. Ramirez will hit next, and then Brian Dozier. Burke, 30 years old, took him a long time to get to the big leagues. The fly to right, and Bird is there. That's almost a Pat Neshek type of delivery. He, he goes down, but then comes back up like uh, Neshek did. Ends at the waist and then almost stands uh, back up again. Not just delivery right here. Drops down and then kind of still sidearm. He's not yeah. really, you know, right. underneath. Yep. So one down, and that's Wilkin Ramirez in the box. He's 0 for 3. Swing of the miss. And Ramirez swings and misses again. Not, not an overpowering fastball, but you saw the sink on that 87 mile an hour fastball. Kind of a guy that didn't give up on his ability. He went to uh, Duke University. He was non-drafted, not drafted out of uh, out of college. Played, pitched in independent uh, league baseball for a while. Went to a tryout camp for the San Diego Padres, and there was a strikeout right there. And signed by the Padres. So those tryout camps sometimes do uh, yeah. give players an opportunity to extend their baseball career. This one down and in to Ramirez. Let's see where Buck wants it. He wants it outer half. Got the inner half of the plate. I believe the Twins still have their tryout camps, but I believe also that the most uh, recent major leaguer, you might have to go back to Jerry Terrell, who was signed out of the Twins tryout camp at Met Stadium a long time ago. I don't believe another major leaguer has come out of that tryout camp. There is a tryout camp, I believe, in Iowa uh, in about, uh, I think, two weeks because I have a pitcher that pitched for me for the WBC, Mark Pallick, a left handed pitcher, and he wants to try to continue his career. And, I, and Terry helped, Terry, actually, Terry Ryan helped me uh, find him a place that there's a tryout camp. But is that just a Twins tryout camp, no, or is that tryout. just. I believe it's overall, okay, okay. overall tryout camp. So all clubs will send scouts to see. Some 300 kids and see if uh, maybe one, two, a dozen, right. who knows, might have uh, you know some ability to play minor league baseball. They'll work the radar guns, and uh, for right. those of you who saw the movie uh, The Rookie, right. uh, J. 
Jim Morris was signed out of such a camp uh, with the uh, Tampa Bay Rays a long time ago. One and two to Dozier with two gone here in the Twins eighth. And an off speed pitch tap foul. So again, here's a young man, 30 years old, did not give up on his dream yeah. and kept, you know, trying to find a place to pitch. And now he's in the major league level. Weather update for Twins territory. Look at the results to our AT&T Twitter poll. We asked you tonight, who was the better acquisition in the Frank Viola trade to the Mets? And most of you went with the closer on the 91 team rather than uh, Kevin Tappany, who was yeah. an invaluable starter. I, I agree. I, you know, that's a tough question because, uh, you know, Rick Aguilera had a longer career in a Twins uniform, but, boy, Kevin Tappany was a big part of that 91 uh, World Series team and a guy that still lives here locally. Yep. Well, Glenn I Perkins. Voted for you, Tap. Glenn Perkins has pitched in three Twins wins and he gets a chance to pitch in uh, what will very likely not be a Twins win. He just needs some mound time right. right here. He had not pitched since last Sunday when he picked up the save against the Orioles in the 4 to 3 win. Did not pitch in Kansas City at all. Uh, just to, to fill in some blanks regarding that trade, uh, the subject of our Twitter poll, and I mentioned the other two pitchers the Twins got also pitched for the big leagues. They were Tim Drummond and Jack Savage, who pitched in the uh, late 80s, 89, I believe. And they each had a cup of coffee right. in the big leagues. They got to the big leagues. Two and one. Two and two. The big name in that trade was David West. Big, tall left hander. People predicted great things for West. No one had much to say at all about Kevin Tappany, and he turned out to be far better pitcher for the Twins than David West. Full count. And a liner to left. And Mastrani will play it on a hop. 
Baxter has his first hit. Fourteen hits for the Mets. Along with their fourteen runs. And now Ruben Tejada. Three outfield flies and a single. And a strike. My goodness. Burt Blylevin, the Houston Astros, are leading the Angels 5 0 in the third inning in Anaheim. Angels are 2 and 7. I'll see where they are in August or September. You know, Clutch start off slowly. There's trouble. The right center field. And Ramirez will backhand it. They're going to hold the runner at third. Perkins gives up a couple of hits here to the first two men he faces in the ninth. Tejada gets his second hit on his on this double going the other way. A breaking ball Tejada just slices it into right center. And now 15 hits for the Mets. Valdespain will hit. High and tight. Ball one. You see that name. And of course, Twins fans will remember Sandy Valdespino, who was on the uh, 65 American League Championship team. But obviously, no relation. Another high tight fastball and a swing and a miss. Why is missing an old? <laughs> yes. True. Elvis Bean from the Dominican Republic. One of the interesting twists. Sandy Valdespino uh, settled in the Florida area, and he was a uh, little league coach for Randy Bush. Wow. Second and third, nobody out. Mets already have two five run innings and a four run inning. Two and two. Tapper to short. And Floribon guts it across. Elvis Speed drives in a run with a ground ball. Elvis Speed picking up his first RBI of the year. Second base is Daniel Murphy. Now Daniel Murphy. Three run double that extended the Mets' lead. Was fairly comfortable in the seventh inning anyway, but then they added four more runs to left field and Mastroani with the catch. It will be a sacrifice fly. And the Mets have at least two runs here in the ninth. They don't figure they're going to need. Yeah, Murphy picking up his fourth RBI of the night. David Wright. It's a home run away from the cycle. Yes, he is. A two run double in the first, an RBI single in the second, and then a triple driving in a run on the seventh. And a strike. Teammates in the World Baseball Classic. 
Perkins a pitcher right at third baseman For that matter Maurer behind the plate also there two strikes. Don't figure to contend this year, but as you mentioned before, they've got Wright secured long term, and he hopes to be part of the next phase of contending teams the Mets hope to have. They're starting to rebuild their starting rotation, even without Johan Santana. Of course, it's a tough division to rebuild when you've got Atlanta and Washington in there right now, and the Phillies. Might be uh, on the back side of a run of contention. Whatever the Marlins figure they're going to be doing for the next 15 years. Half swing. No swing. Three and two. Good take right there by Wright. Slider down and in, and right able to hold up. And he walked him. Well, what you're seeing is exactly why Perkins is out there in the first place. Hasn't pitched much. Granted, the pitching conditions aren't ideal. Doesn't like giving up any more runs and having his teammates stand out there on the field, but better to. Uh, Presumably get it out of the way today rather than tomorrow when it might be a one run lead. You just want to watch the pitch count. You don't want to end up right. you know, throwing yeah. 30 pitches right now at 21 pitches. You're hoping you can have Perk go out there and just have an easy inning. But as we have seen, sometimes closers, when they go out there in a non safe situation, they seem to struggle. Eddie Gordado was that way. You know, Rick Aguilera always said. That's sometimes the hardest because they're not focused as maybe as much. All of a sudden they find themselves in trouble. The right field and Ramirez will chase it down on the warning track to end the ninth inning. The Mets by 11 as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Back uh, bottom of the ninth inning, 16 to 5 lead for the New York Mets over the Minnesota Twins. Fourth pitcher used 
out of that bullpen tonight for the uh, Mets. Excuse me, third reliever, Aaron Lafty coming in. Jonathan Nice started this ball game. He worked the first five innings. Magnuson pitched a couple. Burke one, and now Aaron Laffey. Twins used to uh, see a little bit of Laffey when he was up and down with the Indians. And we'll see uh, Pedro Florimont can get done, and then uh, Aaron Hicks will be the next batter. Yeah, Laffey is uh, his first year in the National League. He pitched for the Indians, the Mariners, the Yankees, Blue Jays, now wearing a Met uniform. Florimar 0 for 2 with a walk. And a strike. It'll be Florimone Hicks and then Maurer. Off the plate, one and one. Two and one. Right. Chopper, right charges, fires. Florimone again on a close play, retired one away. A nice play right there by David Wright, charging, coming in. And Mike Davis very quick with his feet over there at first base, pulling that foot off the bag. Bang, bang, play. And now Hicks has hit the ball hard once tonight, put the ball in play three times and walked. Strike of the knees, Eduardo Escobar is in the on deck circle. He apparently is going to hit in Joe Maurer's spot. And in the dirt, one on one. The one thing I think. Can say about Hicks tonight is he's swung at strikes and taken balls. And it sounds so simple, but I think that's one of the things that contributed to his problems. Especially with two strikes over the course of his at bats tonight, he's taken pitches out of the strike zone yeah. and then gotten a pitch that he can do something. Well, with. sometimes you come up and you know, I'm sure as a hitter, you just want to impress, impress, impress. You want to swing at everything, and especially probably you, know, you talk to a hitter, probably like Coomer or Tom, you know, Bernanski as a uh, hitting coach. You know, you get into little ruts, yeah. and now you know the count is in his favor. He's not one two; he's at least two two here. See if he can get a pitch right here and drive it somewhere. Two and two to Hicks. Outside corner called out to them. And that'll bring up Eduardo Escobar. Laffy picks up the strikeout. Bauer had gone two for three on the night. Mid afternoon game tomorrow. Anybody's guess whether Joe will catch or whether Ryan Domic will catch. Leading the team in hitting with just 11 at bats, but 
Only Josh Willingham has more home runs, and no one had more RBIs coming into play today. The first game goes to the Mets convincingly. A short start for Vance Worley. And in well, the interleague matchup tonight, it was all New York. Hey, even though, you know what, it, it's a cold night for both teams, it was a Mets that came out uh, and charged. Five runs in the first inning, five more in the second. They controlled the ball game. And Tom Hanneman on a frosty night here at Target Field. The game started with snow showers and it ended with a convincing Met win. Dick, the Mets were amazing again, at least on one night here at Target Field with a 16 5 win over the Twins. Twins Live coming up next. We'll break it all down.